I don't know if it's an implied thing or something that we are taught. Some of us probably are taught it. I can't say that I was necessarily taught it in the sense of it being said to me directly this way. But I think that there is something in our training or in the way society has wired us or even some of our doctrines and traditions that if you are a strong person or if you are a spiritual person or if you are a Christian or a strong Christian or whatever have you, you are not supposed to be sad. You're not supposed to feel sad. You're not supposed to be angry. You're not supposed to feel angry. And let me just tell you that that is simply not true. And I think that we take concepts, we take principles, we take concepts, we take spiritual truths even that are legitimate and true. And like we take them out of bounds, way over into left field. And all it does is it gets us into trouble and gets us into these really weird, pseudo spiritual, emotional, dysfunctional places and states that wind up hurting us and affecting our relationships and the people that we care about. And we really just don't live a victorious life doing that. So to be 100% frank and transparent with you, this I have been for the past couple of days dealing, been dealing with and experiencing emotions of sadness, sadness for a myriad of different reasons. One, this coronavirus pandemic catastrophe, whatever you want to call it, has the entire atmosphere of charged with fear, uncertainty, and even cynicism and hopelessness and confusion and people just wanting answers that are not coming and getting answers they wish they didn't have and being spiritually sensitive to environments already as it is and people's energy and people's emotions as it is, that can take its toll on me, number one. And number two, there are things that I have been believing for for a very long time that I haven't seen manifested and haven't seen come to pass. There are a lot of things that I have been uh, using my faith to see change or to see results in that in the natural hasn't materialized. And like I'm sure you have experienced, I have experienced moments where the thought of this thing isn't happening, this thing is not going to happen, and these things are never going to happen, flood my mind just like they flood anyone else's mind. And you know what? What does that cause? What does that bring? What does that generate? Sadness. And so I've had to and have been working through the emotions of being sad, disappointed, unhappy, um, upset about the state of affairs in our world and in my own personal life. And you know what's you know what's wonderful about that? It's okay. Being sad, being angry, being frustrated, all these things are not the they are they are not bad emotions. And Having emotions doesn't make you a bad person. It's actually the way we are wired and it's actually the way that we have been created by God. Having emotions and uh, experiencing emotional fluctuations, that's not where the problem comes in. Let me tell you where the, the problem comes in. The problem comes in when we allow those emotions to dominate us and to dictate our actions, dictate the quality of our lives, and that is when things like sadness and disappointment and anger and frustration can really do us in and, and put us in a bad state. The Bible does not say, don't be angry. The Bible says, be angry and sin not, meaning in the emotional experience of experiencing anger, upset, frustration, disappointment, do not let it move you into making wrong choices and making false steps and taking false actions in light of those emotions. Don't do that. So what do you do? Well, this is what I do. This is what I've been taught to do. And it has been absolutely 100% completely invaluable for me. When you are experiencing moments of sadness, disappointment, frustration, the number one thing I recommend that you do is get your body moving somehow. For me, it's the gym. I love to work out. Um, never thought I would be that dude, but lo and behold, I am that dude. Hence why my wireless headphones are around my neck, because I just came from the gym. But there's something about it, whether you like yoga, whether you like running. I used to love to run, still love to run, just can't do it for what the goals that I have right now. If it's running, if it's yoga, if it's working out, if it's 
the elliptical, it is if it's on the treadmill, if it's walking the dog, if it's hiking, if it's going in the woods, if it's riding a bike, if it's swimming, find something, find some physical activity that is challenging and stimulating enough to get you out of your head for a moment. Get your body moving. Your body is made of somewhat 70% water. And water, still bodies of water that are not moving produce bacteria and all other kinds of really gross things that you don't really want to have. But if you get your body moving, your body's made 70% of water. So if you're not moving your body in some way, shape or form, it is breeding all kinds of unhealthy things that you really don't want to experience. And it's 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 going to cause all those emotions to be pinned up. So I one number one is get your body moving. Number two, instead of resisting those emotions and acting like those emotions don't affect you and acting like you don't have emotions and trying to fight against those emotions, acknowledge that they're there and sit for a minute in those emotions. Now, that is something that, especially in Christian circles, we are not taught to do. We are taught to resist them and not give them any place and ignore them. And that, my friends, does not work. Sometimes you just, instead of, or, so here's what we do. We either try to ignore them, which does not work, by the way. I don't care who tells you that it does. It does not work. We try to ignore them, suppress them, repress them, or we numb ourselves out of feeling them, both of which are very, very destructive. Do not ignore them because they are there and do not try to numb them. We numb them with food. We numb them with sex. We numb them with pornography, excessive working, perfectionism. We numb them in a myriad of different ways. Instead, sit with those emotions. Find out why you're sad. Identify. That's what, I, that's what I've been doing. Okay, why am I sad? Why am I feeling this way? Ask yourself those questions. And then, with the help and inviting the Holy Spirit to help you, invite a new and fresh perspective on the things that you are sad, upset, and frustrated about. That's what you do. You, you acknowledge the fact that you're experiencing these emotions. Sit in them sit in them for a minute or two or however long you need to and ask yourself why you're feeling this way and then ask yourself and invite the holy ghost to give you a fresh perspective on the things that you are being that you are sad or upset about so that he can shed light on the situation shed hope on the situation give you a better perspective on the situation and you make your way through it because let me tell you something emotions are fleeting that's why you do not want to be guided by them because they are fleeting experiences and they do not come to stay they come to pass that's why you don't want to make permanent decisions when you are in an emotional aroused state of, of either excessive like euphoric happiness too is dangerous um anger uh, sadness disappointment you don't ever want to make permanent decisions when you're in those kinds of states because they are fleeting the good news is that they are fleeting. The bad news is, is if you suppress them, repress them, ignore them, uh, try to numb them, then they'll not be as fleeting as they need to be, and they'll stay and ruminate and fester a whole lot longer than you want to. Acknowledge what you feel, sit in them for a, meet, uh, for a season and ask yourself why you feel that way, and then ask yourself and invite the Holy Ghost to give you a fresh perspective on what you're feeling and the situations that are causing you to feel that way. And you'll find yourself maneuvering in and on to the other side of those feelings and things will get better. I promise.